So the last thing you want to do is give away your hard earned money for Photoshop. Am I right? Well, here's the solution. We're going to go into our browser here and we're going to type in photop.com and you'll have a free version of Photoshop. But the question is, how do you use Photop and is it different from Photoshop? Those questions and more will be answered with this complete guide on getting started with Photop. So if you're ready, let's do it. Now, the cool thing is you can actually run Photop in a separate app versus using it directly in your browser of choice. Now, I do need to mention that Chrome is going to work best for using Photop and is the only browser that gives you the option to install the app. So to install the app, we're going to go up to more and click on install photo P from here. You're going to get this window and then you're going to click on this blue button here to install it. And then as you can see, photo P automatically opened the new app outside of the browser. Now the question is, how do you access photo P like this and this app in the future once you close it? Well, you can see that we have a shortcut here in the Chrome apps. Now, if you're not seeing this window, if it didn't open up for you automatically, you can go into your browser here and type in this information to get to your apps. And then you will see that link or that shortcut right here. Now to save it to anywhere on your computer, you're going to go ahead and right click on it choose save shortcut and then choose the location where you want to save that shortcut. Or if this window opened up, just click and drag this little icon here to the location of where you want to store or have that shortcut. All right. So if you've used Photoshop before, you probably realize that the interface or the workspace in Photop is very similar to Photoshop, but there's a couple things that stand out that are definitely different versus Photoshop. So let's go over those. I'm going to give you some other pro tips on using photo P as we go along here. So the first thing you're going to notice here is in the middle of the canvas, we have the photo P branding, and then we have new project open from computer PSD templates and demo files here. These are actually links. So you can create a new project by clicking on this link here, opening a file from your computer, and you can also access PSD templates from here. We'll talk more about all three of these in a second. I just want to go over some of these differences first. So in photo P you can open up PSD files, which is awesome because that's a Photoshop file format that contains all the layers that you created in that particular file and having access to those layers at a later date gives you the flexibility to make updates to that file that you were working on. You can also open illustrator files. I haven't done that yet, so I'm not quite sure how good that is. We have some other file formats here. Another one that's worth noting is this one right here. So this is an XCF file, which is a file format for GIMP users. And it's similar to PSD files in Photoshop in that it saves all the layers in that file that you create. So if you're using GIMP now and maybe you're thinking about upgrading to Photoshop in the future because they have tools or features not available in GIMP, you can use Photop basically for free to test out Photoshop to see if this is something you want to do and you can start using it with your existing GIMP XCF files. Now just to the right of that we have raw. So basically with Photop, you can edit your raw files, but it's not really all that great. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one here just to show you how this looks. So Photop doesn't recognize this file as you can see, and this is from a Nikon Z6 camera. So it's not really up to date with the newer cameras. It's actually a couple years old. And you can see that the options for editing your raw files is very limited. We have our white balance exposure contrast, and that's it. If you want to edit your raw files and you don't have software to do it, there's a free raw editor called dart table that I recommend for users of GIMP or anyone else that just needs to edit raw files. And I have a playlist for dart table beginners in the description below. So make sure to check out that playlist link to learn more about editing your raw files with that free editor. 
Now, another thing that you're probably noticing that's different than Photoshop is right over here to the right. We have a couple of ads running. So the developer of Photopea has monetized this app. And if he hadn't done that, I don't think he would have updated it as much as he has. He probably would have abandoned this project a long time ago. But with the ads, it's giving him an income and encouragement, I guess, to continue updating PhotoP with new tools and features. So there's a couple ways to hide these ads because they can get a little bit annoying, especially when you have animated GIFs within the ads. And I'm going to show you two quick ways to hide those ads. The first is real simple. I think I've talked about this in a previous tutorial. We're just going to grab our browser here and move it to the right and boom, it's gone. And then we can just expand the browser to the left here to fill up the monitor so we can increase the real estate for our projects that we're working on. The other one is going premium or signing up for a premium account. You don't need to create an account for accessing PhotoP for free, but if you want to get rid of those ads but continue supporting the developer, you can click right here and you'll see the options as far as pricing goes for how many days you want to license PhotoP for. Now, there's another benefit to going with premium besides just hiding the ads, which you can see comes with premium right here. So if we take a look under free here, we have steps in history. We have 30. In premium, we have 60. So double the number of steps in history. If you're not familiar with the, what that is, let me show you real quick how this is beneficial to have more steps. So I have this image here that I opened up previously and I did some edits to it. So every time you edit or add graphics to your project, the steps you take are recorded in the history panel, which you can see right here. So I have brush tool, brush tool, brush tool, brush tool. But if I scroll up, you'll see other types of edits that I applied and those steps are recorded. So if I scroll up here, I have clone tool a couple of times and then the spot healing brush, which is retouching. So if at some point while I'm working on a project, I decide I don't like the direction it's going in, I can basically take a step back in time by going through the history panel and selecting one of these steps, which will remove all the steps that I took prior to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on spot healing brush tool right here. And you'll notice that this balloon is going to change color. And that's because this step right here, new adjustment layer, was when I began adjusting the color of the bubble gum. So once you select this, everything below it is grayed out. And then when you take a new step, all of it will disappear. And then it will begin recording those steps from that point in time. So the thing to keep in mind is with the free account, you only get 30 steps recorded. Once you get to 31, the first step, which was opening this file, will be moved and replaced with rasterize. So I can no longer go to that point. So if you want more steps, you can go with the premium to get 60 steps. Now, if you want more than 60, you can contact the developer for a possible future update or feature set where you want more steps or maybe you have another tool that you would like to see in PhotoP, you can request features and tools by contacting the developer directly, either through his email, which is right here, support at photop.com, or he prefers to get new feature suggestions at GitHub or Facebook. I need to go ahead and close this out and I'm going to move this back over. And then he also has options to reach out to him through Reddit, Twitter, and of course this Facebook link here as well. Now, if you have problems with PhotoP and it's not working as you would think it would, maybe it worked great yesterday, but now it's not working today. Maybe a specific tool isn't working as expected. Click right here to report a bug 
And this will take you to the GitHub community where you can then open up a new issue. Now, if you want to learn more about Photopea, he does have, the developer has, articles, written articles on the different tools available in Photopea. And I'm going to be covering these tools in video tutorials that you'll find in the description below for links to those videos about these different tools. Now, the other thing you can do from this page is you can access his blog right here and he's going to update any new releases on his blog. If you want to see more information about that new release, just click on the title and he'll have a list of the new features for you right here. You'll also notice that there are some additional tutorials here as well about other aspects of PhotoP. Now, this next one is really cool. The templates are awesome. So if you click on that, you will then get a list of designs created by other artists that you can then use for your own project. So maybe you need a thumbnail and you're having trouble designing because you're not a professional designer and you want something that looks professional. Well, if you come over here and click on YouTube, you'll get a list of all the YouTube thumbnails available for you to use and customize. So right here we have YouTube thumbnail design part one. If we scroll down, we can definitely see there's a lot more options. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And I'm going to go inside this tab here because I talked about PSD templates from here. And if you click on that, that takes you to the templates directly from the PhotoP homepage versus going into those blog links that I just showed you a second ago. So there's one in here I want to open up and show you how to use or open up these templates. This one right here, this one looks pretty cool. It's a photo YouTube thumbnail. You can basically use it for whatever you want. But if you want to use a specific design to open it directly in PhotoP, just click on it. You'll get some information here about that particular design. And then you can click on the preview here, which will automatically open that design in PhotoP. How cool is that? I love it. Not only that, but check this out. We have all the text layers on different layers. And you can go in and customize the text, change the colors, change the font, whatever you want to do. And then we have a graphics folder here where those designs are on separate layers as well. And again, you can customize these graphic layers based on your own personal needs. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now I'm getting a little message here from PhotoP asking me if I really want to close it because I didn't save my changes to this file. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, because I do want to close it and I don't want to save it. So now let's take a look at working with files in PhotoP. And there's one thing that's really critical to understand about using files in PhotoP. And I'll explain that in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another file here. I'll go into my bubblegum folder here. I have a PSD file. This is basically the design that I showed you previously. And I'm going to go ahead and open up another one because if you want to open up more than one file, you can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop here and I'm going to open up this XCF file. I created this in GIMP and open it up. It's going to take a few seconds here to load up because it is a large file. So let's take a look at how large that file is. It's 1.3 gigabytes in size. It's huge. So as long as you have enough resources, you can create very large files in PhotoP and it's not going to slow down. If it does start to slow down, that means you don't have enough RAM for that project that you're working on. But typically, a lot of the projects you're going to work on will be 10, 50, maybe 100 megabytes in size, more depending on the number of layers. So if we take a look at the layers in this one, I have 40 grouped layers. And then inside of those, I have two to three layers in each of them. So I have around 100 layers in this file alone, which is why it's 1.3 gigabytes in size. Now, if you want to create a new document, because maybe you have these two files open and you want to use those files or those images in those layers in a new document, 
you can create a new document by going up to File, New, and then from here you can type in the dimensions that you need for that particular project. Or if you take a look down here, we have some pre-made sizes and templates for those as well. So if you click on one of these, the templates will update based on that size. And then you can select that template and it will open it up and then you can customize it based on what you need to do for your project. So if you take a look up here, each one of those files that I opened up, it did so in a new tab. So now I can come in here and say, well, maybe I want this image here in this document. Well, you can do that very easily by clicking on the layer, hold down your mouse key and drag it to that tab. And once you release, it will then add that image as a new layer. How cool is that? Now, I do have two other PhotoP tutorials, one on editing your photos in PhotoP and then another on graphic design in PhotoP. I'll have both of those links at the end of this tutorial. But before we get to that, there's something vital you need to know. This is a huge warning that you need to know about PhotoP and working with your files in PhotoP. So unlike Photoshop, PhotoP does not have an auto save feature. So you want to get into the habit of saving your file and your work every two to five minutes. Otherwise, if you work on an image for 30 minutes or a design project and your computer crashes or the power goes out, well, you're going to lose everything and you're going to have to start over. So you have to get in the habit of saving in PhotoP. If you go up to file here, you'll see an option that says save as PSD. Save itself is grayed out. So first you have to save this as a PSD. Once you click here and save it, as you can see right here, it's going to automatically download that file for you. And then when you go up to file, this should be grayed out. So I think there's a bug right now, but we should have an option to use save and not save as PSD. Once this bug is fixed, this should not be grayed out. And then you can use this keyboard shortcut to quickly save versus coming up to the menu to save it that way. Now, the other thing is if your browser crashes, then you may need to refresh the page. So watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to come up here, click right here, and this is going to reload the page. It's going to ask me if I want to do that. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and click reload. And now I've lost everything. So the images that I created have been closed and the document that I created has been closed. So if I hadn't saved my work, then it would all be gone. I would have to start all over. So that's why it's important to ensure that you're saving your files in PhotoP as you're working so you don't lose the work that you've created. Now, if you want to continue learning how to use PhotoP for editing your photos, make sure to check out that top video right there. And if you need to learn how to use PhotoP for graphic design projects, check out the video there on the bottom.